Welcome everyone to State of the Source 2020. My name is Georg Link and I want to talk with you about metrics for open source. In light of the insights that we have gained from the Chaos Project over the last couple of years. To set the stage, let's travel back in time six years. Heartbleed was discovered and shook the world, shook open source specifically. What happened? Heartbleed is a vulnerability inside of OpenSSL, a library, an open source software library that was used by almost every server on the planet. Heartbleed allowed intruders to get access to sensitive data. <laughs> this vulnerability was undiscovered for many years. The, there's, there was this mismatch that really shook us all because the OpenSSL open source library was used so widely. And yet when we looked at how the project and the software was maintained, it was a few people who did it alongside other jobs. There was this mismatch between the importance of this critical infrastructure and what resources were put into its maintenance. Another example, let's travel forward in time to 2017. Another, especially in the United States, big earthquake so to speak, was the data breach at Equifax. Equifax was using an open source software, the Struts, the Apache Struts framework, but failed to update it to close a known vulnerabilities. Several months later, the hackers exploited this known vulnerability. Equifax had not updated the software, even though the open source community had already released an update. So when we talk about the state of our source, of our projects, there are many questions we have around the health of our projects. We want to know how quickly are bugs fixed? Can I make an impact in the community? How active is the community? What is the business risk of using an open source software? What is the project? Uh, will it still be around in the future? Uh, you know, there are so many questions we have around projects that we wanted to solve. Now, let's formalize what I'm actually talking about when I am talking about project health. I'm sure you've gotten a sense for it from the examples, but formally, I think of project health as the potential to continue developing software. And the examples that we just looked at, OpenSSL and Equifax, showed that we need to ensure the production of quality software and we need to monitor the health of the projects that we rely on. And this is where we will talk about metrics. We will talk about today project health, why it's important, we already covered that, and look at the challenges for understanding project health through metrics, what the Chaos Project is doing to help with that, and I'll give you some advice for your own metrics journey. I will not cover these in order, they will be all meshed together, but these are the high level topics for this presentation. So project health, we understand it is the potential to continue developing quality software. If we look in the academic research, there are three areas that academics look at when they look at the health of a project. They look at the source code, they look at the community that is creating and maintaining that source code and the resources available to them. And there are many stakeholders that care to understand project health, users, organizations, whether users or creators of the software, the communities around these projects, and of course, foundations and researchers. Project health, there are some who can just look at a project and understand the project health. These super experts, however, are rare. And so the proposition here is together, let's be better, stronger, 
faster. And I'll use this theme, better, stronger, faster, to guide the next set of slides. So let's get together and solve this issue. The Chaos Project, we started the Chaos Project in 2017 as a collaborative project at the Lang Foundation to create metrics and analytics to help define project help. We are a group of industry professionals, academics, open source practitioners, and we are creating a platform for everyone in the open source ecosystem to come together and work on this important topic. Now, when I talk about metrics, it's a method of measuring something. And we also refer to the results obtained from this. So we have, you know, project data, it's nebulous. We have a method to then get clear insights. If you want to use this cloud uh, sun metaphor. The data, the project data that I'm talking about, well, there are different sources, but usually we are thinking about trace data. And trace data is created accidentally. You know, when we contribute to open source projects, we are creating contributions that are public and shared with others. And there's metadata associated with that, like who made the contribution? When was the contribution made? Those kinds of metadata and the contributions themselves are the trace data. We didn't create the data to be analyzed. We wanted to contribute to open source and we can analyze that. An issue with this is the contributions contain personal identifiable information or short PII, like names and emails, which leads us to a set of ethical and legal challenges. For one, we need to protect personal information. Sure, it's public, but still there are rules and regulations like the European General Data Protection Regulation or short GDPR that applies nevertheless. We also want to be mindful about possibly de-anonymizing individuals. If we have an oddball or someone very unique in our community, and we report on the demographics, which then people can be very easily pointing fingers and saying, Ooh, I know who this person is that is behaving in a funny way. We want to be mindful of those things, especially as we are talking about, you know, gender identity and sexual orientation and religion and gender and areas where we know open source is lacking diversity and people face discrimination. It's, it's a truth. There's no point in denying that. Also, we need practices for managing data and reporting the insights. And so together, we can be better. In the chaos project, we are developing practices, the procedures and best practices for data management. We are discussing how we can analyze communities at scale through metrics. We are looking at how can we reduce the bias in decision making through our way we look at the data and the metrics so that we can support the data driven management and shared decision making that we want. In open source, we want to share the leadership. <laughs> sure, that, sure, we do have our benevolent dictators for life, but we have plenty of open source communities that are very big and where we have shared leadership and committees and special interest groups. And we need the data so that we're all on the same page. Now, if you want to implement metrics in your own community or as an organization, you want to understand the projects that you rely on, you will face organizational challenges. <laughs> For one, you need to agree with everyone on what to, to actually measure. You need to then establish routines and practices so that measuring just becomes part of the normal day-to-day -day work. Otherwise, if it's one-off, it's not going to be as effective. We also need to recognize diverse set of contributions. If we just go to the easy to observe data and collect data like you know, the Git log readily available. 
we are limiting our point of view to that one data source and anyone who is contributing there, completely ignoring mailing lists where people coordinate, do community management, event organizing. There's so many contributions that contribute to a healthy project that we need to be aware of and have proper data on. And we also run the risk of gamification. When we start having leaderboards and people work more towards getting up there, being number one, they're going to make the contributions that get them there completely or sometimes losing sight of what it actually is the project is about and how they are contributing to it. So together we can be stronger in this regard. The chaos community is developing a set of metrics that can be very inspirational to understand how to, to have a set of metrics around diversity and inclusion of our communities in our project, to assess the risk, license risk, business risk in our project, to understand whether a community a project is on the rise, is mature or declining, the evolution of our community. What are the metrics we can look at there? Or the value. <laughs> What's the value of an open source project to individuals? the contributors, to organizations using and contributing to the project, to society as a whole. We want to understand this and we are building out metrics to understand this. There are also common metrics, metrics that are shared across all of those or, you know, more common challenges like how do we attribute um, contributions, not just to the individual person, but also their employers and the organizations that stand behind them. There are several more lessons learned that I would like to share with you as well for starting your own metric journey or advancing in your metric journey. Listen, start by collecting everything. When you start out, just collect everything. Sure, it's like turning on a fire hose of data because there is so much data, so many metrics that we can look at. So my second advice is to know what you're looking for, know what your goals are then ask questions about what you need to know to reach those goals or whether you are on the right track and then answer those questions with the right metrics. Using the goal question metric approach or short GQM helps you filter through the vast, uh, the big amount of data that you have and tell a story. Just knowing that contributions are going up is not enough to know how the community is doing. For example, in the chaos community, we had triple number of issue comments earlier this year. And well, I know why it happened because Google Summer of Code was about to start and there were many different students interested in working with the chaos community. I'm we had the pleasure through Google Summer of Code and Outreachy to be working with 10 mentor mentees this year. And now we have Google Season of Docs mentees. So it's great. But we need to understand the background of why the number of contributions was going up. And we need to tell that story, not just show the graph. Also, I already mentioned gamification and that if we avoid leaderboards and even individualized metrics, then we avoid that gamification. So once we solve these organizational challenges, we may want to actually dig in and get the data. But where do we get the data from? Well, think about where the, your community is. Where is your project active? Probably there is a code repository, um, Git usually, maybe it's on GitHub or GitLab. Uh, maybe you're using an issue tracker like Jira. Maybe you're using a wiki or there's a discourse forum, the mailing list. Maybe there's instant messaging through IRC or Slack. Maybe you're meeting offline through meetup.com. Wherever your project is active, collect that data. But now we get to the technical challenges. Getting data and making it useful is not that easy. We, we have challenges around consistently collecting the data, especially as 
the platforms change, as APIs change, as data formats change. So we need to constantly be following up with that. Also, people use different usernames and different email addresses to contribute to open source. So we need to manage those identities and merge them together. The data may be coming in in different formats. Date, how many different ways are there to display date and encode it? Um, so if we want to have a platform where we have all this data together, we need to standardize that unified and then calculate metrics. We may know when an issue was opened, we may know when it was closed, uh, but we may be interested in how long it actually was open. And so we need to take end date and start date and calculate the difference and store this in our data so we can analyze it. And then we need to visualize and report the information. And so together in Chaos, we are building software to give you a jumpstart with collecting the data from communities to present the metrics and analytics to users through visualizations. We are doing experiments. We are trying out new metric ideas and practices. And we have different software packages that are actively being used and maintained. The uh, Going from the right to the left, the Kregit project helps you look at source code and who is responsible for adding something. You know, similar to git blame, but git blame works at the line level and git the um, credit goes to the token level. So you can actually see who added that variable and who last edited this uh, function name, even though the line might have been edited for other reasons. Augur, the next project, is a research project at the University of Nebraska at Omaha and the University of Missouri. It's the research project that started alongside chaos where we are trying out new things and starting from scratch. How would we approach open source metrics today? And then all the way on the left is the Grimoire Lab project. This is a project that was started by Biturgia, a company that is providing metrics, analytics, dashboards to customers in a professional way. And Grimoire Lab has that history, is very mature, um, and was one of the founding projects of the Chaos Project as well. So use the Chaos software. Rounding up, coming to a conclusion, Chaos provides a variety of resources. I can also recommend the Chaos Cast, our podcast, where we talk about stories and experiences of measuring community health and project health and sharing those insights of how we actually go about doing this. You have the metrics that we create as building blocks for your own metric strategy. You can use the software as your tooling and join the Chaos community. We are your peer group to discuss any concerns, any issues, any problems, and offer advice and develop solutions together. So here are my resources, the links to the podcast, to the metrics. Take a look at them, take uh, the software out for a spin, and then join the mailing list, listen in to what we are working on. And then when you're ready, start participating in the working groups that we have. So together, we can be better, stronger, faster. We can understand project health. We are working on the metrics, on the software that gets us there so that we can have reliable, sustainable open source projects and not just have them, but also identify where we have areas of improvement. With that, I am rounding it off. Thank you so much for listening, <laughs> coming to my presentation virtually. I am on LinkedIn and Twitter. Reach out to me, connect with me. I'm happy to take any questions now, but also just send me an email later. I'm happy to strike up a conversation and I'm always happy to hear new stories and offer my advice. So thank you everyone for being here. The I don't think there's any questions right now. So I, I just want to uh, reiterate that we are the, the Chaos Project. We are here for you. 
we want to provide a platform for the open source ecosystem for everyone who is interested in metrics to have this place to get help and support and find resources. So I'm, I'm warmly inviting all of you that uh, as you're embarking on a metric journey to check out what we have already created, but then also share your own story. We'd love to hear from you. One of the things, I'll just keep talking until someone asks me a pointed question. <laughs> One of the things that I know some are, especially companies are interested in is to have like an inventory of open source projects and to have uh, like a green, yellow, red stoplight system to know, hey, these are the projects we need to pay attention to versus these are fine. And we call this quality models. You want to build out a quality model that where you define if these metrics are all within this bandwidth, um, then we're good. But if they have spikes or there's something going on, then I want to be alerted. And so yeah, quality models is something that we are currently working on in the Chaos Project, and there's more to come. So Jeff asks, have any open source software projects not wanted their metrics used? OK. So are any projects scared to share or not want to participate for political or other reasons? Um, so where, where does metrics uh, come from? There are basically two ways that I've seen metrics starting to be collected and generated. Uh, one is just uh, companies and people who are interested about an open source project to start collecting data. Um, data is public because we work in the open. So the Git log is public. You can just clone the repo and we all want that as an open source community. And then you can run your analysis on that. Um, there are other types of analyses that are more tricky, like if you're collecting Twitter feeds or Stack Overflow. And um, so on. The other way that I see metrics starting to be generated is actually the communities themselves, where the their committees or community engagement um, special interest groups that want to know what is going on in our community, how can we improve our communities, um, or how do we know who has voting rights? Who do we elevate into the status of whatever status uh, you have in your community? And so the community itself starts to track its own activities to elevate what people are doing. I have not seen any project that, that opts out of metrics. Not that there's really a good way right now either. What I have seen is individuals who say, OK, I don't want my data to be tracked. And this goes into legal and ethical concerns about personal identifiable information, where we have laws like GDPR in Europe that say we, as the contributors to open source, own our own data. Even if we make it available through open source projects, through our contributions, we still get a say in how that data is being used. And so if we want to do ethical data analysis on open source projects, because we don't know if we have any Europeans who GDPR would apply to, before we start an analysis, we should inform the community saying, hey, we're starting to have a dashboard. We're starting to analyze the data from this project. And anyone who does not want to be included in this analysis um, can opt out. So that's an ethical way to approach this. But this is really at the individual level, not at the project level that you're asking. Maybe that was a very roundabout answer to your question. But it's a, it's a big concern. I know a lot of 
people who are starting to look at metrics have this concern, especially when they're working in organizations. How do we make this ethical? How do we make it, uh, how do we comply with regulations like GDPR? And from an open source project perspective, there are benefits to having metrics. One is you actually want to showcase, say, hey, we have a need for help for contributors. And here are the metrics to show where help is needed. Um, or we want to highlight here's where we are especially active because activity begets more activity. <laughs> and you want to highlight that activity. That's why marketing open source projects is important to their success. And having metrics to help with that is quite powerful. On that note, we are at our time limit. Thank you so much for your participation. Thanks for your presentation and addressing all the questions. Thanks, everyone. See you around.